Up next, one man's mission to help those with one-time needs, it snowballs into a nationwide movement. Find out how you can get involved. This is really good stuff. You don't want to miss it, so stay with us. You're watching The Dave Ramsey Show on the Fox Business Network. Welcome back. When Dr. Keith Taylor offered to help out people in need with small portions of his modest professor's salary for things like a pair of glasses or one month's car insurance, he had no idea that it would snowball into a nationwide network of people asking for, asking for and for receiving one-time small donations. His online charity, modestneeds.org, last year alone funded over 1,500 people and gave away nearly $900,000. Actually, it's a little more than that. And uh, Dr. Keith Taylor, uh, an old friend, was on my radio show about five years ago. He's a young old friend. And he's joining us now from our studios, Fox Studios in New York. Hey, Keith, welcome, man. Hey, Dave, it's great to be here. I'm so happy you had me. Thanks. Well, thanks for coming. I mean, you've done it all. You've done the Today Show, the Early Show, and People Magazine. This thing's become a big, hairy deal. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, talk about Modest Needs and how it started and what it is. I kind of gave a little bit of an intro, but I want folks to hear your story. It's fabulous. Well, you know, just the short version of it is that, you know, as you know, I was a professor in, in Tennessee, uh, really happy with my job. And one day, essentially, I was driving home from work and just had one of those moments of, of absolute gratitude. Do you, know, do you know what I'm talking about? Absolutely. You just, you, you just for a second, you think to yourself, you know, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky to have, you know, what I have. And I started thinking about some of the people who had helped me in the past. And, you know, I, I think all of us have had those, those kinds of short-term emergencies where your car breaks down and, and, you know, you're working hard, but, you know, you're, you're not making a lot of money and you have to choose. Are you going to, you know, pay your rent or are you going to fix your car? What's going to happen? Uh, because you just don't have the capacity to save yet. That, and that was where I was as a student. And so uh, I thought about some of the people who had helped me and I thought to myself, you know, when I'm rich, because this is how I think people think about philanthropy, right? When I'm rich, I'm going to set up a fund just like this to help people with these short-term emergencies because there isn't one. And all of a sudden I just had this, this moment where I realized that what I'd been missing all of these years is that the people who had helped me had never been rich, they'd been kind. And uh, that, was, oh. that was the eureka moment, you know? It, the word philanthropy, you know, I started thinking because my, my training was in language. The word philanthropy doesn't have anything to do with money, it translates compassion for people. And I thought, you know what, that's what I've missed all these years. It's not how much you have, it's what you do with what you've got. So I downsized my life and opened a really tiny, dinky website uh, where I basically took uh, $350 a month and said, you know what, uh, there are a lot of people out there who are in that position that I was in. You're working hard. You don't qualify for conventional types of assistance. You have a short-term emergency that's threatening your self-sufficiency. And if you're in that kind of position, let me know, and I'll do what I can to help. And that's how Modest Needs started. And did it light up immediately? Were there just a list the first day? No, no. Actually, the plan was that it would sit sort of on like the 900th page of Google somewhere, and mm -hmm. somebody would get desperate enough, you know, maybe once a month to go that far back into the Internet and actually find this, and maybe I'd help one person. What actually happened is that, believe it or not, on the 1st of April in 2002, people began to find out about this. And uh, I woke up, I had this morning ritual where I would check my email, and that usually took about two seconds. Uh, I went, you know, turn on the computer, I'm, I'm checking my email, and the email downloads for 25 minutes. And I look, and I've just got thousands and thousands of letters. And, uh, you know, really what was interesting is what the letters said. About 10% of them, because it happened to be the 1st of April that they found out about this, said, you know, this has got to be a joke, because, you know, who would actually give away their money? You know I mean? Who would help people? And uh, another 10% said something like, well, you know, if you're serious, uh, I found a lump in my breast the other day, and I really need to go to the doctor, and I don't have insurance, we should consider paying for an $80 doctor visit. I promise the other 80% of the letters said something along the lines of, this is something we've needed in this country for a long time. Where can I send money to you? This is what we need to do. Uh, and that was how Modest Needs started. Whoa. So it was an 80%, 10% just blowing you off, 10% mm -hmm. of needs and 80% potential donors. That's right. That's exactly right. Now, of course, things have reversed somewhat since then. You know, we, you know, we have quite a, quite a few applications, and we, and we have a lot of donors nationwide. But uh, it, it's just been remarkable to watch how people, you know, not, not just people who, you know, who have the ability to give conventionally, but people who give maybe $5 a month, $10 a month, a dollar a month. And, and that adds up now to, you know, this year we, we're looking at doing maybe $3.5 million in, in really small contributions. It's amazing. 
What is the average size of the contribution? Uh, it varies, but about a dollar a day. The average person gives about $30 a month, and they almost all give monthly because we have a, a matching grant program. So uh, essentially, it's a really fascinating thing that happened. We've tried to be really creative about how we've done this, this work. And uh, uh, I went out not too long ago, about three years ago, a foundation in California wanted to support this and, and you know, give us, a, give us some funding. And uh, I said, well, you know, I'm not sure it's a good idea. I can't believe I said this, but I said, I'm not sure it's a good idea if you dump a lot of money on us. And, I, and they said, why? And I said, because you're going to make the people who, who have been supporting this all along with, with these small amounts, 30 40 $50 a month, feel insignificant if you do that. And they said, well, why don't we then use what we have to match what they give? And so basically this foundation for the last three years has matched every recurring contribution that people make. So somebody that gives $5 once, it's worth $5. Somebody that gives $5 a month, it's worth 10 instantly. And uh, that just means we can fund twice as many people. Wow.